in this beautiful electronics magazine of September 1961, I found an article about electronic organs. And I wanted to do some experiments with that. Of course we know that uh, the sound of all kinds of waveforms differs. Uh, um, a square wave has a certain type of sound, a um, sawtooth wave has a certain sound, of course on the same frequency, and that has everything to do with the harmonics, and the sine wave is in a certain way the purest sound, because uh, it doesn't have so much harmonics. And I found this article, organ, electronic organ circuits, all is in Dutch, but of course the schematics are international. Uh, here they publish a circuit of an oscillator made with a parallel T filter that is switched is switch between the input and the output and it produces a sine wave. Very interesting, very interesting. Um, but in the uh, on the second page I found for instance that the sine wave had to be changed somewhat into a kind of um, sawtooth wave. And that was done with neon tubes. You see that circuit. Neon tubes. They also acted as a frequency divider. Nowadays we have of course modern chips that can be used as frequency divider chips. Uh, both TTL and MOSFET chips etc etc. But in those days this was the solution and the article gives many very very practical tips about how to do that. For instance to immerse such a neon tube uh, in white paint and you can synchronize such a neon tube by winding a coil around it and then uh, at say voltage I'm trying to find a neon tube yes I found one uh, for instance here this is a neon tube They were used here in this circuit, neon tubes, and you can synchronize uh, the frequency of that tube by winding here a coil over it and then dip it into white paint. That's one of the very interesting things that I found in this article. Anyway, uh, it has no reference to this video because I work with uh, transistors. But anyway, interesting. Um, I published in the past in one of my books, Blueprint 1, this circuit of a sawtooth generator. It surely worked, no problem at all. The only flaw was that uh, sometimes when you set the frequency to a certain um, value, Sometimes the oscillator doesn't start or stops at the end of the scale or the beginning of the scale anyway, but it works. So I had to take out the flaws and make this circuit. This is the final circuit of that simple sawtooth generator. It works very properly. It always starts uh, when you uh, turn the frequency potentiometer. 
that frequency potentiometer is here. This gives an important preset. And here I write, uh, you can use here also a 470k potentiometer. That's for people that like to do experiments. You can get the linearity of the waveform somewhat better, not much, but anyway. With these simple circuits, there's always a problem with the linearity of the waveform, but the circuit is quite good, and I want to demonstrate that. Here are the frequency bands that this circuit covers. With a 100 nanofarad capacitor it goes from 28 Hz to 304 Hz. With a 10 nanofarad capacitor from 238 Hz to 2.4 kilocycles, 4 and 7, maximum 5.6 kilocycles, 1 and 5, maximum 16 kilocycles. And these are the capacitors. You can use a switch or directly wire a capacitor in when there is no need to reach a certain frequency band. Pin connections here of the use transistor pan over somewhat. And let's listen now to how this circuit works and what it produces. In terms of uh, sound and waveform. This is uh, the 100 nanofarad capacitor that's wired in. So 0 0.1 microfarad. And you can see the waveform here. Linearity is quite good in my opinion, but it changes when we go to lower frequencies. Now it should say uh, 300 Hz. And when I change here the potentiometer, it goes to another frequency. Twenty five Hertz, and when you have some idea about how waveforms are built up, you can see that the linearity is not straight here. So that linearity is not very good. But let's see when we lift up the frequency. That works much better. Now go to the 10 nanofarad capacitor. It works 2.3 kilocycles. This is the waveform. Change the time base somewhat. That's a very good linearity. This is straight. And I change the frequency potentiometer. And here we see a kind of bow, so that means uh, that the linearity drops somewhat. Anyway, here it's good, 2.3 kilohertz. Let's go to the next capacitor, that's uh, 4 and 7, so 4700 picofarad. By the way, one intermezzo, you see how these transistors have to be soldered in. Looks a little bit complicated, but I've made a drawing here. That's important, I want to show that before my camera runs out. Here is how these two transistors are wired in. So 
sometimes is quite uh, say something to think about how to wire them in because they are in a certain way contrary etc etc but this is a good way when you want to make this circuit and also here the frequency bands that this circuit can produce and something about the waveforms here not so much linearity but here there is linearity so it gives a kind of insight and of course linear linearity is not always um, necessary but for instance in a time-based circuit of an oscilloscope there must be a good linearity otherwise you will see kind of distorted waveforms where say a sine wave on the oscilloscope screen is stretched out in a certain way but for music could be that linearity is not a big issue anyway um, again 5.4 kilohertz waveform Five seventy hertz. And finally, the smallest capacitor that is one and five, so fifteen hundred picofarad, that blue block in the middle of the screen. Of course, when the capacitor gets smaller, the frequency gets higher. That's a kind of physical rule that is applied to the electronics and in fact everywhere in physics smaller capacitors mean smaller charge so when the charge is uh, say um, moved away over that capacitor there is a smaller time a capacitor that um, has a bigger charge needs more time to discharge everything to do with the sound etc 16 kilohertz waveform quite good sine wave though we see here a kind of say rounded part of the wave I think it's not very important especially in music circuits um, now the sound is not audible but say let's turn the frequency potentiometer back and listen at the same time So you see a change in amplitude, that's one of the issues of this circuit, doesn't matter much in my opinion. So this is the highest frequency that it can make, 16 kilohertz, amplified it somewhat more. That's quite good. Back to the circuit. The overview here. Wish you luck when you want to make it. Also the overview here. My camera normally works only 15 minutes. Anyway.